So, um, so yeah, this is a simulation software. And uh, this uh, particular ball has uh, some properties that which will make it behave a little bit weird way. So let me, um, just so that I can demonstrate this, you know, simulation software kind of simulates the real world. Let me just uh, put material property to something that's more usual. Like it's a material with some um, amount of friction and it's, uh, uh, it has some, it's a little bit elastic as a, it's like a basketball or baseball. It's, um, so if I pick it up and drop it, it kind of behaves the way you expect the balls to. It, oh, oh, I know why it's doing that. Um, the ground is right now frictionless. So it's as if it's, uh, um, it's on a, a ice skating rink or whatever. So. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. So when I now let it drop, then it does that. So, you know, I just wanted to show that as to illustrate the well, it seems reasonable. It seems like it's an act, um, reasonable enough representation of real world. Now, so I uh, do some, I show some things with this in the, the concept video, which you should take a look at. And what I want to illustrate right now is um, this is the uh, earlier demo that I'm trying to fix. So um, this is, I was trying to show example of um, totally inelastic collision and I kind of messed up uh, when you see me um, do this. It's supposed to be a collision where two things stick together, but they don't quite stick together. And that has to do with the geometry of the thing. So what I'm going to do now is fix the geometry so that I can have two things colliding and they stick together and I can demonstration, uh, demo demonstrate some features of that. So uh, I built uh, this uh, device um, before, let's see, um, built this device before and it uh, has this weird shape for a very specific reason. Um, and let me make sure that I have all the material properties set up correctly. I do want the floor frictionless. This is so that I avoid any interaction uh, between objects that are not these two colliding bodies. And for the two colliding bodies, this is what I want. I think I do want them to be frictionless because, um, well, because. <laughs> so I want them to be frictionless, okay. And uh, this restitution, this um, determines how much, um, how, um, how, how bouncy it is. So you can actually see with uh, this uh, object. So when I lift it and let go, you can see that as it drops, it kind of, you know, comes to stop right away. It's because this material is very not bouncy. So I want the ball to be exactly the same. So let me set the restitution here to zero. Okay. So with that, what I can now do is I can give this a little bit. So let me pause the recording first. I mean, simulation first. And I can give this ball a little bit of rightward velocity. So let me give it a rightward velocity of, I don't know, five meters per second seems reasonable. So as these two things collide, this is what you will see now. Um, I want to give it a little room. So this says rightward the velocity. Um, oh, I think I can, uh, well, let me run the simulation and I'll do other things that I can only do in simulation. So this is kind of what it looks like. All right, big deal. Someone, uh, sometimes I guess in physics problems, we could have described as someone runs up to a cart, jumps into a cart, and then, and I guess a physics question I could ask is, how fast is the cart traveling then? Um, I can do uh, kind of do vi uh, visualize things. I can visualize velocity here. Then you see velocity here. And I can also visualize velocity here. Then, oh, oh, one thing I do need to make sure is I want to make sure their masses are the same. Uh, material, mass, okay, they are the same. So you see that as they collide, oh, uh, and they have now have the same velocity more or less. And um, so this is good for kind of visualizing things. The ball starts out with some velocity. Um, when it gets on, then you see that as they are moving together, the ball and the 
cart has the same velocity and you might even uh, kind of be able to eyeball it and see if, uh, is this about half of what it was before, maybe. Now, because this is simulation, we can actually do better. We can plot the velocity that will, or plot the speed that will uh, show us. Uh, actually, I think I can make this velocity. I can plot the x velocity and, you know, this will uh, show us how velocity changes as a function of time. So I'm plotting that for the ball. Let me plot it separately for the, um, uh, for, for the cart. So it, the labels are, well, this one says circle and that one says polygon. Uh, it's photo label, I probably, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so let me just run the simulation. It'll collect the data on the velocity as it runs. So that's kind of what that looks like. Let me stop that. You see a little bit of fluctuations there. That's this ball bouncing around within this little trap that I built for it. And you can actually see the numbers here. The ball starts out at five meters per second. That's the initial velocity I gave it. And you see that it, this is the whole process of collision. I kind of want to ignore that because all that process gets confusing. Uh, I can kind of stop here and look at the velocity here. Okay, it's at about 2.4. And the, the cart starts out, started out at zero. And after the collision, the cart's velocity is right now at about 2.4. So they are at about the same velocity. So, and if you add them together, they are at 4.8. So it's close enough to five. Um, you see that as the simulation runs that the velocity decreases. So there's probably something, some friction or whatever that's causing the velocity to decrease. So in this uh, inelastic collision process, you see that <clears throat> the, uh, the, the velocity of the ball went down to half. And um, um, all right, so that's interesting. Um, there are some parameters that I can change um, that I can use to illustrate the idea of momentum conservation. So this uh, setup right now was with two identical masses. They both had 1.5 kilograms. And so, um, so when they have identical masses that uh, kind of simplify some things, that's sort of one of the reasons velocity went down to half. But this the simplify the process sometimes hides some things. So let me um, just to add a little bit of complication so that you can, um, uh, so that I can talk a little bit better about idea of momentum conservation. So I'm going to make the mass of the cart uh, three times as heavy. So material here, instead of 1.5, it'll be 1.5 times three or 4.5. And uh, let me clear the plot. And um, the ball has still the same velocity initially. Uh, let's run the simulation and see what happens. Hmm. So you see that now the relationship is not quite as simple as before. Um, so the ball started at five meters per second and the velocity it's ending at is not quite half. It's at one point to whatever. And so it's, all right, I, it's not very clear what that, uh, how it arrived at that value. Uh, one thing you can see that um, is still useful to notice, and you can kind of see that it's enforced by the physical condition, is that the velocity of the ball after collision is the same as the velocity of the cart after the collision. And actually, I think in this class, if you're dealing with any quantitative problem, we will tend to stick with this completely inelastic scenario. It's because it makes some of the numbers easier because the, the final velocity of the objects are the same. And, but so right now, as you're looking at these numbers, um, it, um, I guess what's uh, not necessarily easy to figure out is what quantity is conserved. Because if you're trying to look at conservation of velocity, it doesn't quite work out. You do a 1.2 plus 1.2, 2.4, and that looks nothing like five. So 
what we instead use and will introduce as you are working through chapter five material is the idea of momentum and conservation of momentum. Momentum is defined as mass times velocity. So, um, so that's really what um, <laughs> the only thing I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to any, say any more than that. Momentum is mass times velocity. And that is a quantity that is conserved under certain cases. And this scenario you have here is one of those cases where momentum is conserved, mainly because there's no friction with the ground. So uh, let me show you that momentum is conserved. So this ball has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. So this is the initial momentum of the ball before the collision. Let me bring up the calculator. 1.5 times five meters per second. So this is 7.5 kilogram times meter per second. This is the initial momentum of the, this is the initial momentum of the ball before the collision. Let's uh, look at the momentum of the ball and the cart after the collision and see if this was conserved. So the mass of the ball is 1.5. The mass of the cart is 4.5. So the total mass is 1.5 plus 4.5 or six. Let's uh, calculate six times 1.2 times 1.2 is equal to 7.2. So it's a slightly different compared to 7.5, but um, so you chalked it up to effect of residual friction or other things. So you see that, oh yeah, seven, it, so the, we started out with a momentum of 7.5. Can you imagine that under ideal scenarios, it would have been 7.5. So this is kind of illustration of a completely inelastic collision. 